Hello and welcome. Yes, we are Geeks Assembled and we're on day release from the asylum. Yes. And today, Lee is completely looking the opposite way. <laughs> He's gone senile, folks. Sorry to say. But today, oh, we are going to talk about Peter Kay's Phoenix Night. Yes. And uh, series one, episode one. And let's see what the guys here think about this first episode of Phoenix Nights. So uh, I just want an opening statement from each of you. An opening statement. So have a think. And who wants to go first? Just a short, you know, just a short line. Because sometimes people do go on. This, this <laughs> episode of this first series was a breath of fresh air to comedy back when this first aired in the early 2000s. It's because um, comedy got so repetitive and dull. This one was sort of a take on real life in a working men's club. And it could, it could really happen in real life, this. It was, it was that, you know, he was laughing at it and you're thinking, I can see that happening. So that's my opening statement there. Mm. Anyone else? It, it was very good, yeah. Uh, Peter Kay, obviously. Paddy McGuinness, uh, two uh, comedy uh, icons. I'd call Peter Kay an icon. Probably wouldn't call Paddy McGuinness one just yet, but he is good. He's a very good comedian. Um, who's now been relegated to uh, presenting a dating show. So, yeah, what, what a career for him. Uh, but, yeah... Um, <laughs> You yeah, so very uh, impressed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I did audition for Take Me Out, but they said no. Yeah, but, no, you know, no. Yeah, sure. No one would do it. <laughs> it, was, it, ed, it ended up throw him out. It's, throw it's him not out. called <laughs> frighten them off. It's called... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is, a, it is a very good... The, the bits where uh, the security guards are sort of messing around and one of them... They've got the headsets on that they earlier in the show didn't want to wear, and that and one of them's on the bus, uh, just shouting down the microphone at the other at Paddy McGuinness's character. That was very funny. It was just, and, and I think the best bit is the folk band at the end, ah. with the racist song. Oh yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> That's got to be the best bit. So yeah, that, I, it was really good. What about Susan? Just, you know, keep keep it short because we've all gone into okay. more depth on favourite characters and stuff like that. Okay, I'm, uh, I was surprised. I've, I've only seen Peter Kay in the, in the whole Doctor Who thing in Love and Monsters. So this was really fun to watch. It was really fun to watch. And uh, Alex, just keep it short because we'll go into favorite characters and yeah. moments. And yeah, I um, I was wondering if it was like Lee said, if it was a take on real life, if it was a take on, you know, running a small club and or American Idol or things like that. But like you said, we'll go more into detail on it. And Jason, just keep it short. We'll go into more detail. I thought it was pretty funny, so that's all I'm gonna say, and I'll say more later. So talking about funny, why don't we talk about what our favourite moments? Let's go into favourite moments since Jason brought out being funny. And what's your funniest moment in this? Who wants to go first, Lee? What's your okay, uh, favourite moment? I've got a few. I mean, there's, as, as Connor's already said about the uh, Max and Paddy, the, the, the door bouncers with the headsets. Um, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? He's on the bus, then he's in the fish and chip shop, you know, <laughs> getting the chips. Can you hear me now? Um, also, he said the the folk band at the end with with the racist song, uh, <laughs> which Brian Potter didn't realise until someone pointed it out. Um, it, it's just all the way through it. it There's little things, even the DJ, I can't remember the DJ's name, but... Um, you you having a sale there, son? Because we ain't got a, we ain't got a CD player, <laughs> so he had to yeah. use mine. Um, and then, you know, when he's, he's playing his records, let's get ready to rumble. And he puts Alid Jones walking in the air on. <laughs> uh, you know, it's things just little things all the way through. And and also, Brian Potter's 
drinking glasses <laughs> because he couldn't reach the uh, the spirits up top. He had, he had emptied a flower vase. And he's using that to drink with. It's just, it's a, it's a gem of a, you know, you, you can pick anything out of one episode for the 25 minute episode. It's just, it's just amazing. Anybody else want to say their most funny moments or? I love it when the, when, when they are, uh, they're do they, the phone rings and the guy is like, uh, Hello, and and he's like on the roof, and 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 he the, the, the everything is just just in shambles, and there there's no way that they're gonna get that club open, <clears throat> and then they're still like you know working through all the 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 details and try and 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 he wants Las Vegas, and 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 so they're adding more lights to it. It's just funny. It's just that was so funny. A little bit of construction humor. It was great. Jason, your favorite moments, your funniest moments? If you had well, any, that was maybe. Was the guy, like, well, something you said about the can you hear me now? It's like, can you hear me now? I can see you, dick. Can you hear me now? <laughs> and then the, with the DJ, like, say, oh, say, oh, well, I was walking in air, but he was actually flying. <laughs> Um, then the, can you hear me now again? Then the guy in the why well, the guy was on the bus and the other dudes decided to flip him off. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, especially when you guys when you said that the guy was singing with the Oasis one and the guy was like trying to um so, trying to get him out of there. <laughs> yeah, some of that stuff was just pretty funny. Um, especially I guess when the guy was on top of the loud the ladle trying to pick on the other dude. I mean. It just goes back and forth. But yeah, that's my favorite moments in that. Connor, and do you, do you know who was singing the song, Connor? Do you recognize him? Tim Healy, isn't it? Yeah, from Benidorm, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, he was married to Denise Welsh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, very good act. He's a very good actor, actually. I, do, I did like him in Benidorm. He's also in Still Open All Hours now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as as Lee said and uh, Susan and everyone, you know the uh, the the band uh, singing the racist song and then having to be manhandled off the stage because it's causing <laughs> the biggest sort of offence it could is uh, is fantastic. What a moment! Yeah, that's got to be the best moment, hands down. And what about Alex's favourite funny moments? What did you find funny about this, Alex? Uh... If you... Like I said, I, I don't know if it was a parody of both, you know, running your own small business and he's getting interviewed by the uh, the woman and getting her name wrong and all this other stuff and kind of bad mouthing the other clubs. And and uh, I guess it was also funny, the um, quote unquote talent show where they're doing the David Bowie and he gives his answer, you know, to the people performing so i mean it was funny but like i said i don't know if it was partially a parody on running a business and trying to do like you know an american idol you know x factor type of thing because i saw some parts in the show where actually you know i could see why they did what they did and other parts was kind of like mm. but like i said it's also uh, i guess i guess the humor i like is a little bit more um a little bit more connected or a few more rapid fire jokes than, than it was in this one, but it still was a good show. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think it, it was all pretty funny. I've never seen this series before. I mean, obviously I know who Peter Kay is of, I mean, who doesn't know of Peter Kay? I mean, he is a, he's a legend now, really. I mean, he's had so many good series. He's had that, car one recently i can't remember what that was called car share. Um, yeah car share but i i actually found myself quite enjoying this i thought it was all pretty funny actually it was all pretty funny um i thought roy walker he did a good job and the jokes between you know he said he's still doing the cat's phrase didn't he and he said say what you see and i find that funny because i know you know i know who roy walker is i mean maybe people in America might not know what catchphrase is. So might just be thinking, what the hell's all this on about? You know, what's that joke meant to be? So maybe that, that, bit, of, that bit of it 
only works for us over here, you know, because the Americans might not know. But like everybody else has said, I think one of the funniest moments is the, is the song and uh, Tim Healy. Yeah. Uh, was that really him playing the guitar? He could yeah. play the guitar quite well. Yeah, that, lo that looked like it was authentic. Yeah. yeah it, looked, it looked and sounded like it was coming from there. Yeah. I mean, I watched it on YouTube and the quality uh, was pretty crap, to be honest. It was only in like 3P. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought there was quite a lot of funny moments. But talking about Roy Walker, let's go into favourite characters. And I have to say, I thought Peter Kay was excellent in this. I thought he was excellent. And Roy Walker did, did a good job in this. He was a good sport as well. Well, Peter Kay did ra rather well in this because it's, he plays two parts in this. Yeah. There's you know, Brian Potter and there's um, Max, the bouncer. But um, I think all this supporting cast did rather well. I mean, it, it, um, Peter Kay was the writer of this and also there's two other people in this acting with him who also co-wrote it with him. So, but Dave Spikey is the compare. He's brilliant. brilliant yeah, he's actor. great in it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I think it's just an ensemble cast. It's just you, you can't go wrong with it because it's so down to earth and so you think, yeah, it's true to life. It's you could meet these people in the streets. You know what I mean? It, it's not all these people shows where you think, oh no, that's a bit far fetched. Them those sort of people can't exist. But looking at these but he people, bases, yeah. he bases all his characters off people, doesn't he? He does. He does it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think this this program's one where he brought most of his old friends to act with him. He knew all these people. Like Paddy is like a childhood mate of his, and all like that. And it's it's yeah. It, you can't go wrong with this show. I love it. It's a shame he only did two series of this. It's got good chemistry. Between mm. the characters, is it? yeah, it's got good chemistry, and of course, Dave Spikey went on to do uh, to reinvent Bullseye for Challenge. Yeah, yeah. yes, a short-lived show on Challenge. Yeah, he, w he went from this to that, didn't he? I think because that was about mm. two thousand and five, six, something like that. And what yeah. what what year did this end? Uh, early two thousand, yeah. Yeah, so it went from this to that. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> who's other people's favourite characters? I really liked the I liked the, the 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 group of ladies who came in and were like, you know, as a as a as a unit, you know, mm. singing along and, and stuff and getting the words wrong. I thought that was really cute and, and very, very fun. What about Connor? Favorite characters? If you got any, maybe you uh, like them all. Peter K. Um, it's funny because I don't know what it is about Peter K. But when you see him do stand up, he's always really sweaty. That that's his gimmick. But like mm. you think he do this sort of stuff, he's like more mellow in both comedy and just how he is. So I don't know whether he ramps himself up to that level just for stand up or whether it's He's got a really diverse sort of comedy, sort, sort of grasp on comedy as a whole. That's He's very he, clever. Yeah, that's why he can do so many stuff like uh, Car Share, which is just based in a car. You know, he, he really escalated that show to what it was, uh, a BBC hit, because uh, of his sort of diverse take on comedy. But uh, yes, uh, him and Paddy McGuinness are probably the only two that, that stand out to me. Uh, Paddy McGuinness's character when they're taking the piss out of his hair and he shakes the uh, the ladder <laughs> until, the, until the guy falls through the until the guy falls through the window is a, a funny moment um, yeah they're, they're the two characters that really stand out to me what about Jason favourite characters Jason Peter Case was standing out for me um, even the guy who was on the ladder harassing the other dude I mean was standing out for me. I mean, I, I should, I'm, I'm going to watch the rest of the other series of it just to see what I really think of the characters because there isn't really much for me to um, 
have an opinion of with them, but it's pretty good to follow, pretty funny. So that's my only opinion. And what about Alex? Favorite characters, if you've got any, or maybe you like them all? Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with uh, Connor and Jason. That That's basically what I was paying attention to was Peter Kay and the two guys on the ladder. And Those they had a spin-off, didn't they? Yeah. Mm, what's up? They had a spin-off. Lee might know more. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Paddy and the, the Power Paddy. Uh, it, it was called, yeah, it was called Max and Paddy Road yeah, to Max Nowhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was sort of Phoenix Night Series three sort of thing, but it was mainly about those two on the road. Yeah, it was a road trip, wasn't it? They were on the run. It was. Uh, oh, they were on the run. Ah, yeah. good or not as good. You have mm. to watch it. <laughs> it's crap, in other words. I won't bother. Um. <laughs> well, it was a good series. Does anybody have any tidbits or any? Anything else they would like to add? Any information well, about this episode? Well, as, as far as I know, the, the the crowd in the club, you know, when the cabaret was starting, was a real people to, just for a night out that it brought them do all you know in what? just I for was going to ask that. I was going to ask you that because that's what Benidorm do, is have real, um, you know, when they're in, like, you've seen Benidorm and they're at the... Um, the thing at the end, they go to the uh, not, you know, the bar at the end, and they're listening to the music. That is a real audience. They're real mm. people in the back watching it. They're real people. Yeah, yeah. they just get Most people of, who are yeah. on holiday in that hotel to just sit in and and be on telly, you know, yeah. in the background sort of thing. Have a have a free, have a free night's entertainment, and you know, yeah. come on in. Yeah, that's that's as far as I know. I was wondering if it was a real audience. Yeah, I I was wondering too because unfortunately, a lot of American sitcoms they sort of have people that buy tickets and then they either have a band or they have a stand-up comedian kind of warm up the crowd and then they go into the taping. And And then they have those applause symbols, so like that that tell you when to laugh. Right. So yeah, so I'm not sure if that was a '70s, '80s, '90s thing and whether they still do it. But I was wondering about that in the crowd. I said, I wonder if this is, re- you know, if this is completely spontaneous or if they planned everything or not. And that, I think that's another thing because I think you can, I don't know if they did this on purpose or half and half. Half of it seems planned and half of it doesn't. And I wonder if they did that, you know, for intent or if it just came out that way or if they had so many takes that, some well, of was, you know. I, th- I think it, most of it is scripted, but if you yeah. go down the ad lib route, you might as well keep it in, shall we say. Yeah, the, all those ladies were getting their, their words wrong and they were getting, they were, they were, you know, sort of out of time with the music. It was very, you know, very organic, very fun, very, you know. My well, dad's I, like yeah. that. He sings I mean, a song and he'd get the words wrong and the lyrics wrong. And, mm-hmm. Oh, he'd be singing out a tune. He'd be saying, oh, he'll yeah. start the song back to front sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually that makes it seem more realistic because it's not as perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not everything yeah. is perfect. I mean, yeah. even, if you go, even if you go to a live show, not everything's going to be you know, perfect. <laughs> so that, that actually helps it be more true to life. And funny. And funny. Yeah. I yeah, very true. Yeah. I watched something about Peter K, and he said to I think it was Danny Baker that he doesn't like um, Phoenix Nights being repeated because it dilutes the quality of the comedy, um, which is a fair point because comedy is probably the most repeated. Like you always see Only Fools and Horses, Faulty Towers, you know, even things yeah, like they're always funny. No matter how many times you see them, they're always funny. They're always. Funny. I don't think it dilutes it. I, I think after a point. It, it it becomes predictable, and it, that it, how can yeah, yeah, but I've got a counter argument to that. Sometimes comedy is funny because it is predictable. Like Mrs. Brown, you know something is going to happen before it happens. Therefore, you laugh before it happens because you know it's going to happen. Even if you well, yeah, it a yeah, hundred so times, happens, you're yeah. laughing because you know it's going to happen. It just makes you laugh thinking about it happening. But something like this, I don't think it suits that. So I think he's, no. he's got the right idea. I mean, again, though, uh, wouldn't it, if, if you 
devoted yourself to that philosophy, then you should only see something three times and you won't have any favorite movies or TV shows or books because technically you already know what's going to happen. But again, it depends on how well it's written and the energy and things like that. I mean, as long as you're not watching the same thing constantly, you're not watching the same thing, you know, a billion times, that's fine. But again, it depends on uh, the style and that also depends on the directors and things like that. I mean, that, that's going a little far afield, I admit it. Uh, certain movies that are strange and certain TV shows that, you know, aren't hugely popular. But I mean, you can still like a show and be a fan of a show or a movie and it doesn't make it any less enjoyable, even if you've seen it over 20 times. Hmm. And for those of you who have never seen this before and have watched this for the first time, are you tempted to watch more of it? Yep, definitely. Alex? Yeah, I, 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 might, I, I, might watch, I might watch a few more episodes just to see what they do. So you really enjoyed it then, Susan? You really thought it was... Yep, very you know, cute. Enjoyable. Your type of humor? Uh, all, 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 all humor is my type of humor. I love humor. I love... Yeah, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll definitely press forward with this. Yeah, it's all on YouTube anyway. I don't know where you watched it, but it's all on YouTube. Okay. What, what about Connor? Have you seen it before, Connor? Are you tempted seen, to watch more? I've seen bits and pieces of it before. Um, I'll watch, yeah, I'll probably go back and, uh, and watch it uh, totally. Yeah, I, I think I will too. I think I'll watch more of it. If it's on telly, then on, you know, then if it's repeated on whatever channel, I don't know what channel this was broadcast on. Was it Channel 4? Yeah. If it's repeated, then I'll, I'll give it a watch. Yeah, I'll watch more of it. So we might as well go to our final say and score. So let's go with Susan first for her final say and her score on this episode. Thanks. I liked it a lot. It was adorable humor. And I really love like, like Peter K. His, his, you know, different abilities uh, made it funny and made it great. And, and the, it was, he was a totally different kind of a character than he played in Love and Monsters, which is the only other thing I really <laughs> seen him in. And so, yeah, I'll give it a I'll give it a nine out of ten. Don't don't judge Peter K by Love of Monsters, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. All it's right. one of his. Uh, uh, okay, what never mind. Never, never mind. Low. I won't. I won't judge. Yeah. I, <laughs> and what about Connor? Final uh, say and score. Well, as I said, Peter K is such a diverse uh, actor and comedian. He can do serious as well, which is pretty shocking. Um, yeah, don't judge him on Love and Monsters because when uh, no, no, I remember 2006 it would have been uh, Peter Kay was sort of in his prime at that point, and uh, that was absolutely tragic to see him <laughs> lower himself to that. Uh, so yeah, such a diverse uh, sort of comedy, it's ve uh, very organic, as has already been mentioned. Um, and yeah, send the buggers back, I'll give it a nine out of ten. <laughs> and Alex for final say and score um, yeah I like I said I, I am willing to watch a little more of this to see what they do with it uh, it's not really my type of humor but I give it points for a very organic very realistic feel um, so I'd probably give it uh, uh, eight for the effort and the presentation like I said I, I'm willing to give it three more um, watch a show uh three more episodes and then see if i really like it but but the actors are good so good. going quite well and uh jason final say and score i'm gonna give a series a chance and end up watching almost every episode i can with it um so yeah definitely pretty funny i'm gonna give this a can you hear me now 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 well this is going down well across the pond i tell you Peter K, you, you should, you should uh, do more stuff abroad, I tell you. And Lee, final say and score? You're He's muted. muted. He's doing a beef, Dad. He's pulling the beef, Dad. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You see what I did? 
It was Plum. Yes. Hello, um, <laughs> oh, um, say, say what you see, Connor. What do you see when you look at Lee? Say don't what? say Lee. it. Don't say it. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> My final thoughts is that the image I'll, ki- I'll take from this is Roy Walker coming out of the club at night, absolutely drunk, singing, yeah. bring send the buggers back. Um, but it, I know I've watched the series. I've watched series one and two and Max and Paddy. Uh, so I know what all the episodes are like. This is a very good start to a brilliant series. But some episodes are better than this one. So just for that, I'm giving it a 7.5. It's a damn good start, but the series does get better as it goes along. 7.5 and I think I'm going to give it an 8 because I really enjoyed it it was a very good first episode um, but uh, I do prefer other comedies out there I do prefer um, Faulty Towers Mrs Brown but th- this was very good so I'm willing to give it you know another, another few episodes see how I get on you know and yeah I'm going to give it an 8 so that's it. We're back off to the asylum. Yes, the one that Connor's in, actually. Yes, as you can see. Give us a wave, Connor. Give the camera a wave. Ah, that's not a wave. He does get confused. It's as good as a wave. It's as good as a wave. That's, that's uh, alternative facts, I think, there. That's alternative facts. Anyway, thank you for watching. Tell us below what you think about this first episode of Phoenix Nights. Hit that subscribe button. If, if you want more chaos like this, then hit that subscribe button. Take care, look after yourself, and we'll see you next time.